So, eating meat's going to kill you by giving you heart disease or cancer or some other disease, right? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's just flat wrong. Once again, it's BS, bad science. You see, meat's been unfairly vilified. Looking back at the scientific record, animals were first domesticated, beginning with sheep and goat, 10,000 years ago. And ever since, humans have, until really relatively recently, consumed meat without developing heart disease, cancer, or other illnesses. We're engineered to eat meat as a species. That's why you have canine teeth, to tear flesh. So the good Lord designed them with that express purpose in mind. Now the problem with meat, follow me here, it's not meat itself. If the type of meat that we are eating and the way we're preparing our meats. You see, the meat that is most commonly sold in your local market or grocery store is not the same type of meat that our ancestors ate. It's not even the same meat that our parents or grandparents ate. The cows of today, frankly, are not the cows of yesteryear. And the majority of meat today that we see in stores is raised on what's known as factory farms. Now, on these factory farms, livestock's confined to pens where they live and they're packed in like sardines. And to keep costs low, these cattle that are on these farms, they're fed corn and the cheapest grains, as well as what's known as byproduct feed, which with government approval consists of things like chicken manure, feathers, bubblegum, candy, even some sewage products and aluminum foil. And I'm not joking. So how do you think that impacts your body and your health when you eat things that have literally subsisted on a diet of crap? Well, let me tell you, it's not good. You need to understand, it is not just about what you eat, it's about what you eat, ate. But it's just not the horrible pro-inflammatory diet these animals consume. They're often filled with hormones and have both natural and synthetic versions of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone that are used in most beef and cattle in all countries in the world in efforts to get as much yield as possible from the cows when they're butchered. Now, proponents of hormone use in meats point to studies showing that these growth hormones are linked to everything from early onset puberty, as well as reproductive problems, cancers, heart issues, as well as developmental problems in children. So, when livestock, though, is raised in these confined spaces and they subsist on these horrible pro-inflammatory diets, it also makes these animals more susceptible to disease and infection. And because of this, factory farm animals are fed large amounts of antibiotics. Nearly 80% of all antibiotics in the United States are used in cattle and poultry production. And what happens when you eat animals filled with these antibiotics? Well, the scientists tell us that it can lead to humans becoming antibiotic resistant, which occurs when bacteria develops the ability to beat the drugs that were designed to kill them. Now, when bacteria becomes resistant, antibiotics cannot fight them, and the bacteria multiply. If you choose to eat meat, you need to stay away from factory farm meats for that reason alone. You want to choose wild, organic, and grass-fed meats instead. You see, grass-fed animals are raised in the way they had been throughout history and prior to this relatively new advent of these commercial factory farms. Can the cattle are not genetically designed to subsist on these highly inflammatory corn, grain, and crap diets. Throughout history, cattle have grazed on a diet of fibrous grasses, plants, and shrubs. This is their natural diet. And when raised organically without antibiotics and hormones and allowed to eat like they should and roam outside as opposed to being confined to pens, they pro this produces a healthy head of cattle like our ancestors have eaten for thousands of years of human history without developing heart disease or other diseases. In fact, there are significant benefits linked to eating organic grass-fed meats. For example, grass-fed beef is known to be one of the most nutrient-dense proteins on earth. It has remarkably higher micronutrient profile compared to grain-fed beef. Most importantly though, grass-fed beef contains much more of the healthy anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats unlike factory farm meats which are much higher in the pro-inflammatory omega-6 fats. Grass-fed beef is also a rich source of an amazing fatty acid called CLA, conjugated linoleic acid. Now, CLA has many health benefits, including the regulation of fat tissue by the body as a source of energy. It helps to prevent a decrease in metabolic rate, which is usually associated with a, in a, with a decrease in caloric consumption. More importantly, CLA plays a role in prevention of heart disease by preventing the deposition of plaques and lipids in the artery. This is a key factor in the development and progression of heart disease. Now, CLA may also help prevent heart disease by acting as an antioxidant and by lowering blood pressure. Additionally, CLA has been shown to prevent cancer cell formation and progression according to studies from Cornell University and the National Academy of Sciences. Now, another reason to eat grass-fed organic beef 
is because animal protein is the single best source and the only natural source of vitamin B12. To put it simply, eating the right type of meat is both tasty and healthy. One of the biggest knocks against meat was its fat and cholesterol content. But again, we know that's that BS, bad science, that we talked about in great detail in a previous section. But here's something that most people don't think about when it comes to meat and health, and that's how we prepare our meats. And this, frankly, is hugely important. Here's why. You see, when meats are cooked at high temperature, meaning they're grilled, they're smoked, they're fried, this creates carcinogens. And carcinogens are substances that are capable of causing cancers. And while this program is about heart disease, it's also about your overall health as well. And we want to prevent cancers and get you to the highest level of health possible. Okay, so those carcinogens, though, appear in the highest levels at the grill mark portions of meat when they come off grills. The best way you want to prepare your meat, though, is by roasting, stewing, and baking. If you want to grill, electric grill. But what about processed meats, bacon, and sausage? Can you eat it or will it kill you? Well, there's evidence between a link between processed meat and cancer, but the risk isn't as high as you may think. The average risk increases by about 1% of developing colon cancer if you were to eat a piece of processed meat every day of your life. However, with that said, you should still consume processed meats on rare occasions and limited quantities if you decide you want to eat those types of meats. Make sure you choose those made from whole meats, not mashables like bologna. Avoid those made with fillers, additives, nitrates, gluten, and added sugar. Look for those that are uncured also. So, in summation, if you're going to eat meat, you want to choose organic, grass-fed beef, lamb, organic and pasture-raised pork, as well as bison, elk, venison, and in small and frequent quantities, organic, nitrate additive and sugar-free bacon, sausage, turkey, ham, and salami. And you want to, at all costs, stay away from conventionally raised factory farm meats. Just remember, it's not just about what you eat. It's about what you eat, ate. So go with wild, grass-fed and organic meats without fear of increasing your risk of heart disease.